everybody, welcome back to my channel, and if you're new here, welcome. So today I am showing you how to give a vintage dresser a makeover. Now this week I've been a little bit under the weather, so my voice sounds a little bit off, but I'm feeling much better, and I wanted to get this video out for today so that you can see what you can do with a marketplace find. A dresser like this that's old and vintage can be completely turned around and given a complete makeover, which is exactly what I did with this piece. It is quite old, like I said, and I kept the original hardware, which I don't normally do for this style, but it just matched perfectly. And I can't wait to see you. I can't wait for you to see the result. So stay tuned and enjoy this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. So here is the piece again, and I'm just getting it situated into my spray area. Now these dollies are amazing if you can find them at your uh, local store. I think the US has Harbor Freight and Canada has Princess Auto and that is where I got them from at Princess Auto. I put two boards on top of them and it is so easy to move furniture around. First off as always I took off the hardware. I absolutely love this hardware. It looks like butterflies. They are original to the piece and quite old and I'm going to clean them up and keep them. So as I was looking over the piece, I noticed some veneer missing and also this trim piece had come off. So I got some carpenter glue and glued inside and underneath that trim. And on the side, I also noticed there was some trim missing and lots of veneer in other places. So I grabbed this little clamp, realizing this is way too small, it's not gonna work. So I had two larger clamps, which are perfect for this piece. I have lots of these hanging around and they really come in handy. You can get them at Lowe's or Home Hardware or Home Depot. Really good for drawers, especially when they're wide. I left this overnight to dry. And once while that was drying, I got my DAP wood filler, which is like wood mimics wood and it's like a putty and I really like this product. I filled in all of the areas also realizing that maybe I should have taken out some of the drawers that would have made it much easier and ended up doing that in the end. Now I also used the wood filler to fill in that missing trim and just shaped it and it worked out great. Next day when it was all cured, hardened and dry I took off the clamps and just checked to see if everything was dry and, and hard enough. So then I got my orbital sander and started sanding all of the wood fill that I had filled in to make it nice and smooth. And some of it was still a little bit showing because the piece is really old and that's okay because it shows character and I was really okay with some of the dents and marks. Then I had to change my sanding disc, sand at the top to raw wood, started with 80 grit and then 220. I cleaned the entire piece with crud cutter and a lint free cloth and just got all of the dirt off after I had scuff sanded the entire piece. Once all that was done, I used Zinzer Bin 123 to prime this piece. And after the first coat, I noticed there was major bleed through. I had a feeling, but I wasn't too sure. And it really, really came out uh, strong. So I went to Lowe's and had a look for a primer because I was really tired of using all of the Kills spray cans. It gets expensive after a while and I found the Kills restoration primer and I cannot believe it stopped the bleed through immediately after the first coat. So I did two coats of the Kills restoration primer. It is water-based so it goes in my sprayer perfectly and because it was thin enough, I didn't even have to add water to it. So here I'm just showing you where that bleed through was on the first coat. You can see it on the side as well. It's sort of a beige color. And I just wanted to go back and, and just show you how the kill spray covered it up. You can see the front there is completely clean of it. And I was just so happy it completely changed my priming work life. 
So after two coats, I sanded it with 600 grit sandpaper and it was so smooth. I sanded the front with a 220 worn down sanding pad and then wiped it with the cloth, wearing my mask this whole time. So here I am just spraying, I think this is the second coat of the Kills Restoration Primer. So once that was done, I sprayed. I started to spray the color, which is Driftwood by Country Chic Paint. I had already started on the front, as you can see there, and wanted to show you me spraying the side. It sprayed beautifully. I absolutely love this color. I've never used it on a whole piece before, I don't think, but it turned out really pretty. And then I moved on to the other side, letting the front and the side dry. So I did about two coats. Now the paint, I do water down a little bit. I add a little bit of water to thin it because Country Chic paint is thicker. Again, sanding in between coats with 600 grit sandpaper. And then I started on the top. So the top was now raw wood and I did a wash of Soiree, which is Country Chic paint again. It's a very, very light beige. I sprayed my water mist onto the paint and wiped it off with a lint-free cloth. This gave it a wash look to the whole piece. If it's already drying, then spray some more water onto it. I continued this with the entire top making sure I got the sides, trims, and the front. This mist bottle you can actually get on Amazon. I'll put it in my description. And it was about $17.99 Canadian. It has different mist sprays, settings. Once that was done and drying, I moved on to the hardware. Now, I don't usually scuff sand the hardware, and because I'm keeping this original hardware, I cleaned it with crud cutter. I don't usually boil hardware, so I just sprayed it with the crud cutter, and the dirt that came off, you can see it on my rag, and I let them dry. Once they were dry, I sprayed them with Rust-Oleum spray, which is, I find, the most durable spray to use for hardware. I've never had issues or problems with the spray and it's just, if you let it dry overnight, then you're going to get really nice hardware finish. And you know me, if you've seen my videos before, I really like adding tissue paper to the side drawer sides. And this paper is actually a new design by Redesign with Prima and it is um, has clocks and gears on it and it just suited this piece so well. So I brushed clear coat onto this draw the drawer side, which is Country Chic Paint's top coat. It's called Clear Coat. I placed the tissue paper onto the surface. And then I used my utility knife to cut along the edges. Once it was in place, I brushed clear coat on again, making sure there was a good amount on the tissue paper. So once I had done that and it was drying, I had all the drawers put back in and then I sprayed with Country Chic Paint Clear Coat for my top coat. And top coats you do not water down. You just filter and put it into your container, making sure that you're wearing a respirator. And I got the front and I sprayed the sides. And as I was doing that, I realized that I wasn't too keen on the crack that is up the side and it's also on the other side as well. So I will deal with that and show you what I did. I put all the new hardware back on, looking so good, and went back to the two cracks. So I filled them in with DAP wood filler and then primed them, sanded primed and then sprayed the paint color over it again. I think with the solid color on the sides, it just didn't look right. And at first I thought it was because, you know, it's it's an aged piece, it's old, it's vintage, and it sort of went with it. But 
I didn't like it in the end. So I covered it all up and repainted and retop coated. And this is the other side that I'm just filling up now. You can still see it in the end just slightly, but not too much. It also gave a little spray to the front, which I kind of liked in the end. Gave it some character and a new look. So here's what it looks like. The paper looks amazing. It really matches this vintage dresser and the sides turned out perfect. The top is gorgeous and I just love those handles. I hope that you enjoyed this video and this piece. I really love it. Thank you so much for watching my video. I hope that you enjoyed it and I hope that it gives you inspiration to find your own piece on Facebook Marketplace or any of your local buy and sell sites. I really feel like this piece turned out absolutely amazing and it is up for sale and I cannot wait for it to go to a new home. I will see you all next Sunday at 3 p.m. Eastern with a new video. Take care and thanks again. Have a good day and don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel. Thank you again.